Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, we continue talking about propagation of waves in medium. Um, today's lecture is a direct continuation of the previous one, where we have introduced uh, basically physical concepts behind propagation of um, waves. Um, today we will primarily deal with mathematics of this. So I will remind you what kind of an equation we have derived with in the previous lecture, and then basically solve this equation. Um, I call this wave equation one, actually. Um, well, there are many different equations which can be called wave equations. This is the most, well, not the most, but very, very simple form for only like two molecules uh, oscillating and basically transferring the oscillations from one to another. It's a, the si a, as simple as it can be whenever we are de dealing with, with medium. Um, okay, now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unisor.com. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture and all other lectures of the course from the website because the website, well, it has menu, which means you, you can actually direct yourself in the logical sequence, lecture by lecture. Every lecture has notes. Notes are basically like a textbook. And they put, well, I put in writing basically whatever I'm talking about during the lecture time. And um, also the website has um, exams. And there are some other functionalities. So I do suggest you to go to this lecture from the website. You go to unisor.com, then choose the course Physics 14. For teens, um, the subject will be waves, and uh, then uh, when when the new menu will open, you will see uh, the uh, particular topic called um, waves in medium, and this is the second lecture um, in this topic. Now, the first lecture, the previous one, um, was basically about deriving some kind of a differential equation, which describes um, propagation of waves and I have <coughs> decided to simplify the whole problem to only like two molecules you have let's say this is a thin metal rod which contains only two molecules that's it a very short one <laughs> and there are springs which connect to the sides and in between these two molecules. So I assume that the molecules have mass m, springs are all uh, the same and they have coefficient of elasticity uh, k, and then how can we derive the equation uh, for um, motion of these molecules? Well, that's very simple. This molecule has basically two springs attached on both sides. If x1 of t is a displacement of this molecule from initial, we are assuming that initially uh, the position is neutral, which means strings are not stretched nor squeezed, so they're all in neutral position of the same length. And x1 of t is a displacement of this molecule from the neutral position as a function of t and this molecule will be x2 of t, obviously. So depending on this displacement, the forces of the springs will start acting. So the force from the left would be um, minus k x1 of t, that's the Hooke's law, and the force from the right depends on both displacement, basically, right? So it's basically like k x2 of t minus x1 of t. Uh, so this is basically the total force which acts on this molecule, and that's why, according to the uh, second uh, Newton's law, this is this the mass times acceleration x1 is acceleration with two uh, 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 slots. Okay, now, and this is equal to minus 2k 
x1 of t uh, plus k x2 of t. Now the second one, again we will do second law of Newton, mass times acceleration, total force. It's equal to force from the right, it's minus k x2 of t, right? That's the Hooke's law. And the Hooke's law from the left, it depends on whether the x1 and x2 are related in a, among themselves. So basically it would be the other way around x2 of t minus x x1 of t minus x2 of t. And that's why it's equal to k x1 of t minus 2k x2 of t. So these are differential equations which were derived in the previous lecture and this lecture will be devoted to solution to this problem. Now, obviously, as with all differential equations, what's important is initial conditions. And I will not talk much about this, but initial conditions is basically position and uh, velocities uh, of these two molecules. Position, you can say that since I was talking about initially they're all in a neutral position, so x1 of 0 and x2 of 0 are are, are are zero, no displacement in the initial position, and we can talk about, let's say, some kind of a push, which means that x1 of t uh, can have the first derivative equal to something like b, whatever the speed is. And then we can, basically on this information, we can uh, not only solve the general solution to this system of equations, but also a concrete for this particular configuration and initial conditions. Uh, I will not talk much about initial conditions. It's only about just general solution. Now, this lecture actually would be more mathematical than physical. Physics was in the previous lecture, and this is the end of it. Now I will talk about basically how to solve this particular system. Now it's a system of two equations. Now let me just remind you that in the, uh, in the very beginning, when we were talking about harmonic oscillations, our main uh, equation was and then k over m we actually um, symbolized as omega square where omega was um, a angular speed and solution to this was d cosine omega t plus phi, where d is any kind of a amplitude and phi is any kind of a phase shift. So this is the general solution to this particular equation and we were discussing this in the um, lecture about harmonic oscillations. Now keep this in mind. This is something which we know and it's basically very easy to derive. If you don't remember you can just go back to that lecture. And I will be actually using this, this idea um, in solution to this system. Now, this system doesn't look like this one, obviously, because there are x1 and, and x2. It's a system of two equations, differential equations. And x1 and x2 are mixed together. So what can we do about that? How can we approach solving this? Well, again, this is more math than... Uh, than physics. Okay, so first of all let me just change this equation slightly. I will divide it by m, so I will have k over m uh, in both cases, which I will replace with omega square. And then my equation will look like this. x1 of t. I will put everything on the left side. So it's uh, plus uh, 2 omega square x1 of t minus omega square x2 of t equals to zero. And the second equation would be um, minus 
omega square x1 of t plus 2 omega square x2 of t equals to 0. Okay, so this is the system of two differential equations with two uh, unknown functions of time. And we will talk about how to solve. First of all, I would like to remind you that there is a mass routines uh, course which is prerequisite to this, where in particular I'm talking about something which I'm going to use extensively in this lecture, which is matrices. So matrices, how to multiply matrix, matrix by vector or vector by matrix, um, their properties, um, and basically that's it. All we need is just basically rules of, of um, uh, multiplication. Now, just in case you forgot, uh, multiplication of constant by vector, in this case I will use the vector of two um, uh, components, A and B. If I multiply constant, that's basically a new vector which is multiplication of this. So that's one property which I'm going to use. Another property is if I have a matrix let's say C11, C12, C21, C22 multiplied by vector AB. Well, in case you forgot about how the multiplication work, let me just remind you. It's the first row times this column, which is C11A plus C12B, and then the second row, C21A plus C22B. That's the result of multiplication. This is how it's all defined, and it has all the nice properties, etc., etc., and I will be using these type of things. Now, using this, um, let me just express this in a vector format, vector and matrix format. I will use the vector, I will call it x. It's vector which depends on the, fu on the it's a function vector, depends on t. It's x1 of t, x2 of t. It's a vector. Okay, so at any given moment time t, I have the two values, which you can interpret as a point on a plane with uh, Cartesian coordinates. One is x and another is y, or in any other way. But let's consider this particular geometrical interpretation of a vector as so this would be my x1, this would be my x2. Oops, this is x1, coordinate x2. Just keep it in mind. I don't have to read that. Okay. Now, this is my vector. Now, if I, if I would like to differentiate a vector, well, I will differentiate it component by component. So, if the vector is a vector function, then its derivative is basically a derivative of each component, which means x, the first and the second derivative is basically vector of derivatives. I mean, vector components of which are derivatives of components. Okay, now, using this, let me just mm, uh, express this particular um, equation as vector equation. Now, what is x1 and x2 with the second derivative? That second derivative of the vector. Now consider this is a small case and this is uppercase. It's kind of difficult to do it on the board. But this, if without index, that's the vector in this case. Sometimes I'm using maybe this just to make sure that's a vector, okay? Okay, now, how can I express this in vector form? Well, very easily. 
consider the matrix 2 omega square minus omega square minus omega square 2 omega square multiply by my vector x of t which is x1 and x2 x1 x2 multiplication of this times this would be 2 omega square x1 minus omega square x2 right okay let me write it there x1 of t x2 of t so multiplication of matrix by vector it's a new vector so this is a vector and the new vector the top component would be rho by column which is 2 omega square x1 minus omega square x2 which is exactly this and the bottom component would be this minus omega square x1 plus omega square x2 so instead of this I can say some kind of a matrix omega which does not depend on time it's a constant matrix of contents omega square is a constant uh, times vector x of t equals to zero now what is zero? zero is actually also a vector which means zero, zero, two components so this is a vector matrix times vector is also a vector which means this has two components this has two components like this and this has two components zero, zero and whenever we are talking about equality between two vectors it means e each component is equal whenever we are talking about plus vector plus vector we are adding by component again so basically this is the same as this just shorter however it's not just shorter it's actually multiplication but with different uh, objects not with numbers but with matrices this is addition not with numbers but with vectors this is a derivation derivative of the vector not with uh, vector function not just a regular function and this is a vector so it's still the same meaning and operations plus and multiplication uh, with vectors and matrices have very similar properties so I can really treat it as multiplication and addition because the properties are basically the same almost the same now why did I do this well because this looks like this. Let me just rewrite it. Instead of this, I will put omega square. Now it looks exactly like this one. But instead of omega square, we have a matrix which contains four components, two by two, and instead of x, we have vector x and instead of zero we have vector zero so it looks the same but it's quite different <coughs> I can just easily write this particular formula as a solution it's not that easy however I would like to somehow reduce this one to this how can I do it and that's a very very important moment um, it's important for mathematics and for uh, for physics what matrix is doing with the vector let me just give you an example what matrix um, let's say 5005 doing when it's multiplied when it's multiplied by vector v1 v2 let's just think about what happens row by column so it's 5 by v1 plus 0 by v2 so it's 5 v1 0 times v1 plus 5 times v2 which is 5 v2 which is equal to 5 times v1 v2 so this matrix basically stretches this vector whatever it is v1 v2 we convert it into 5 v1 v2 so there are certain matrices 
which are stretching the vectors. Now, this particular matrix will stretch any vector. Now, there are some matrices which are not really stretching any vector, but there are certain vectors which they are stretching. Now, there are matrices which are doing something else, like turning the vectors, for instance. Let me give you another example. For instance, you have a matrix 0, um, minus 1, ze uh, 1, 0. What happens then? We have 0 times V1, which is 0, minus V2. So we have minus V2. And then v 1 times V1 plus 0 times V2 is V1. So what is the relationship between the initial vector and the result? Well, let's just think about it. If the initial vector is this, V1, V2, the new vector is abscissa is minus V1. So this, uh, I mean v minus V2. So this is V2, it goes to here. This is minus V2. And V1, instead of horizontal, it goes to up. This is V1. So this is a new point. So this is a new vector. So this vector is converted to this, which means it's turned by 90 degrees. So this particular matrix, matrix is turning any vector by 90 degrees. And now there are some matrices which are turning some vectors or stretch another vector, the, the vectors. The same matrix can do differently. This always turns. The previous example, 5500, five, five, zero, zero, was always stretching. But there are matrices which are stretching one vector, but turn out other vector, or turn and stretch, maybe, or something. So there are more complicated cases, basically a mixture of these two cases, pure stretching and pure turning. These are just you know two examples, but there are some examples which are more complicated and they have both. Okay. But if if I will find <coughs> certain set of vectors which this matrix just stretches. So instead of multiplication by matrix, I can put multiplication by number, whatever the number is. Then our equation would look like vector plus c times x of t equals to zero. This is a number. If this is a number, basically I can I can solve this equation component by component, which means x1, x2 double plus c times x1, x2 equals 0, 0. Now c can be here, c times. And now I can component by component solve these two equations. And they are, by the way, the same. So it's basically one equation. So if I will be able to find certain set of vectors, set of vectors where omega matrix acts only as a stretching mechanism, then I will be able among these um, uh, vectors at least attempt to solve the equation. Maybe it will have some solution in that set of vectors which are stretched by the matrix. Okay, now let me introduce a terminology. If the vector is stretched by a matrix, only stretch, just uh, the same direction but longer or shorter, um, then this vector is called eigenvector. And the coefficient by which we are stretching this vector is called eigenvalue. Okay.
So, my purpose is to find certain vectors where omega times x of t, well, just let's forget about x of t, just v, some kind of vector, v, is equal to some kind of a lambda times v. That's my purpose. For this given matrix, matrix is a constant, it's given, I would like to find this matrix eigenvectors. And then, if I will have a whole family of eigenvectors, among these eigenvectors, I can then try to find the solution to this differential equation. Okay? Now, what is this? Let me just describe it in more well, matrix format. It's 2 omega square minus omega square minus omega square 2 omega square matrix times V1, V2 equals 2 lambda times V1, V2. So this is where I have to find all v1, v2, which basically give me this particular um, kind of stretch. I have to find all these vectors. Well, first of all, let me give you the answer. If what happens if I will put the same values, v and v, whatever the v is. Look at this. 2 uh, omega square times v minus omega square v, what will be, as a result, omega square v. Now, minus omega square v plus 2 omega square v would be what? Again, omega square v. So I can put here omega square as a lambda and this is a correct equation check it out again 2 omega square times v minus omega square times v is equal to omega square v minus omega square v plus 2 omega square v is equal to omega square v so we have a correct uh, answer so any vector which has both components the same would be the vector would be eigenvector with eigenvalue equals to omega square okay that's the answer now let me give you another answer let me put minus here now here is what i'm basically telling let's check it out 2 omega square times v minus omega square times, mi times minus v would be 3 omega square v. Minus omega square v plus 2 omega square minus v would be minus 3 omega square v. So again, from v, v minus v, we get v minus v with a coefficient, with a factor. So this is also an eigenvector. So any vector which has two values which are exactly equal to abs by absolute value but opposite in sign also is eigenvector with a different eigenvalue. The first one was omega square, the second eigenvalue is 3 omega square. How did I receive it? How did I guess the, the answer to this? It's very simple actually. Let's consider again this is v1, v2 And this is lambda, and this is v1 and v2. <coughs> Let me rewrite this slightly differently. Instead of lambda times v1, v2, I will put a matrix lambda 0, 0, lambda times v1, v2. Why can they do it? Well, for a very simple reason. This matrix times this vector is what? Lambda times v1 
plus 0 times v2, which is lambda v1. 0 times v1 plus lambda times v2, it's lambda v2, which is exactly equal to lambda times v1 v2. Now, why did I express it as a matrix? For a very simple reason. Because now, I can write it instead of this, I can write this matrix here. Now I have a little bit more uniform. Matrix times vector, matrix times vector. And now, all these manipulations with uh, equations which we are doing are valid for uh, vector and matrix uh, type. So I will transfer everything on the left and I will uh, take V1, V2 out of parentheses and I will have 2 omega square minus omega square this is not minus, this is two different minus omega square 2 omega square that uh, matrix minus matrix lambda 0 0 lambda this is a new matrix multiplied by vector v1 v2 equals to 0 what is the difference between two matrices it's by component by component so instead of this I can write 2 omega square minus lambda minus omega square minus omega square minus 2 omega square plus minus lambda. This is my matrix. So the new matrix, let me put it in parentheses new matrix times this vector is exactly the same as this right now the matrix times vector is equal to zero well obvious solution is v1 and v2 are zero but we don't need these trivial solutions we need real eigenvector to find right so this is basically a system of two equations with two unknowns now obvious solution is zero so we have one solution. Now, I need other solutions. When do we have other solutions if we have a system of two equations with two unknowns? Well, when both equations are basically like proportional to each other. You know, you have an equation like uh, I don't know, x plus 5 equals 0 and uh, 2x plus 10 equals to 0. Uh, sorry, plus 10, y. These are the same equations, right? Because this one is just this multiplied by 2. So we have not 2, we have actually one equation. And that's the only way how we can get multiple non-zero solutions. Because if it's something like 2x plus y is equal to 0, then this system has only 0 as a solution. x0 and y0, the only solution. So whenever you have 0 on the right, and you have this linear type of equ uh, equations on the left, <coughs> the only non-trivial solution is when the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. Now, what is the determinant of this matrix? If you forgot about determinants, um, again, I can refer you to previous lecture, but it's kind of obvious. Um, Whenever you have equation, let's say, ax plus by equals 0, cx plus dy equals to 0. Two equations with two unknowns. How do you solve it usually? Well, you multiply, for instance, this by d and this by b, and subtract from each other. And what happens? bd, bd, y, it will cancel out. And what will be? AD minus BC is equal to zero, right? Times x. Now, if we are not interested in solution x equal to zero, 
A, G, and B, C must be zero. And that's what actually is. A, D minus B, C. This is a determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. So my idea about having non-trivial solution basically results in a very simple equation for lambda. 2 lambda square minus lambda times 2 lambda square minus, which is square, minus minus omega square times minus omega square, which is omega to the fourth, and that's supposed to be equal to zero, right? So 2 omega square minus lambda is equal to plus minus omega square, right? Omega to the fourth goes to the right, square root of both sides. And then we have two solutions. If it's a plus, then lambda is equal to omega square. If it's a minus, then lambda is equal to lambda first, lambda second, 3 omega square. Remember when I was talking about, uh, I guessed, um, the results of uh, um, eigenvalue equation? <coughs> My first case was uh, coefficient was omega square, another uh, uh, coefficient, another eigenvalue was 3 omega square. That's where I'm from. 1 and 2. Okay, so we found the possible eigenvalues. Let's find possible um, eigenvectors in both cases. Okay, so the first one is Okay, let's consider this case. Okay, what happens in this particular case? Um, our um, omega matrix times some kind of vector v1, v2 is equal omega square v1, v2. Well, let's find out what is a v1 and v2. So instead of omega matrix, I will put exactly what it is. 2 omega square minus omega square omega squ minus omega square 2 omega square matrix. Must multiply. 2 omega 2 omega square v1 minus omega square v2 is equal to the first one. Now this one, minus omega square v1 plus 2 omega square v2 equals omega square v2. Now from this, this omega square and this omega square, so we go this to the left, this to the right, and what do we have? omega square v1 is equal to omega square v2. Here, this goes to the right, this goes to the left, and we have omega square v2 is equal to omega square v1, which is basically the same thing. Obviously, we have only one condition. v1 is equal to v2. So if v1 is equal to v2, if both components of the vector are the same, then this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue omega square, which means that any vector which describes the displacement of both molecules are such that x1 is equal to x2 if then this is an eigenvector, and these vectors actually are such that our matrix is just stretching them. So, we can actually find solution among these vectors, solution to our differential equation. 
Now, what happens if we will, if we will start from this? Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, let's do it this way, this way. And what do we have? Um, this goes to the left, this goes to the right, and I will have minus omega square v1 is equal to omega square v2. Here, um, this goes to the right, this goes to the left, I will have minus omega square v2. So, as a result, again, these are the same. v2 and v1 are opposite in sign, but exactly the same in theory. So, what it means? It means that all vectors which are of this type also are eigenvalues, but with a different uh, eigenvectors, but with a different eigenvalue. This with a uh, eigenvalue omega square, this with eigenvalue 3 omega square. So, being as it may, we will actually consider solving our differential equation not for all the different possible this is our differential equation if I will solve it not for all the possible vectors x which has component x1, x2 but only for those vectors x where components are the same or components are the same by absolute value but different in sign then all these vectors are eigenvalues and instead of multiplying by matrix I, can, I can multiply by corresponding eigenvalue so let me solve this equation for the first case so x1 x2 plus omega square x of t x of t sorry I said they are the same components only if they are the same then my equation actually can be expressed as a uh, multiplication is equal to zero so if I'm looking for a solution x of t and x1 of t and x2 of t are the same which means our um, molecules are synchronously moving left and right back to the picture two molecules springs so if they are synchronously moving I'm looking only for this particular solution is there a solution is our differential equation would satisfy in this particular case well the answer is obviously yes because this is basically two exactly identical differential equation the first component and the second component right they are the same because if these are the same these are the same multiplication by omega square is multiplication by a component so I have exactly this type of equation and I know the result I know the solution so this is a particular solution when x1 of t is equal to x2 of t equals to d cosine omega t plus phi where d amplitude and phi uh, phase shift are basically any thing and it will satisfy so if both are the same you will see that equation is completely satisfied because then multiplication by a matrix is the same as multiplication by omega square and everything follows from there differently if I will do this and this I know that this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 3 omega square now I have to put minus here as well right because if this is ve vector it's first derivative and second derivative are the same uh, plus and minus will be here so and the solution is again exactly the same this equation on the first component and the second component 
are exactly the same because minus and minus and zero so it's still the same thing as plus and plus and plus and zero and I will have yet another solution x1 of t is equal to minus x2 of t is equal to some kind of other amplitude and cosine now instead of omega now I have to have square root of 3 omega right t plus some other psi uh, phase again e and psi are any amplitude and phase shift now square root of 3 omega it basically comes from here right if this is omega square this is omega if, if, if it's 3 omega square it's supposed to be square root of 3 omega so I have another solution so let me just summarize it what kind of two solutions I have <coughs> one solution is a vector with both components the same and it's d d cosine omega t plus phi d cosine omega t plus phi this is my vector which represents a solution to differential equation for any d and any phi any amplitude of any phase shift. Now, the another solution is another vector. E cosine square root of 3 omega t plus psi e co minus, sorry, now it's minus e. They are opposite. So I have two solutions, two partial solutions. Now, if I have two partial solutions to a system of linear uh, differential equations, obviously any linear combination of them would also be a solution. Right? So if I will multiply this by alpha and this by beta and add them together, that would be also a solution. Now, um, Basically, it's another story if this represents all the possible solutions. Well, let me just express this as one vector, actually. So it would be alpha times d, but d is any and alpha is any, so it doesn't really matter whether I multiply two any numbers, I can put just one coefficient that will have alpha. Cosine omega t plus v plus beta again beta times e both are any number so I can just leave just be beta it will be the same thing cosine plus three t plus psi and the second component of this vector would be So this vector, this is x1, this is x2. So this represents displacement of the first molecule, this represents displacement of the second molecule. So this is a general solution to our problem. Now, whether these two uh, components of this particular vector where alpha and beta and phi and psi are any amplitude and phase shifts it's, it's an open question right now, I'm not addressing this if, if, if this is really all of the solutions this is kind of beyond the complexity of this course, it's complex enough but in any case, yes, this is a complete solution and let's just now think about it if beta for instance is equal to zero, then I have the same components here they're always synchronously moving left and right, our two molecules. 
if alpha is equal to zero and beta is not, then they are opposite. In case the phase are equal to zero, but phase might be not equal to zero, and that complicates the issue. So we have different phases, like this, and different amplitudes, alpha and beta, and the combination is complex. So these two molecules on springs in a thin rod are actually making, depending on uh, initial conditions, by the way, they're making, uh, might make very complicated uh, movements, because both initial position can be not equal at zero, both uh, initial speeds can be not equal to zero, but basically, f for example, if you will take these two molecules and just move it to the same uh, displacement, initial displacement, and then let it go, most likely they will be together oscillating or if you will put it into different directions by the same displacement and let it go, they will probably will move like this. So it all depends, but if you will start doing some shifts, etc., that would be obviously a problem. But this represents a general solution, and uh, if you want, for those of you who are really inquisitive-minded, you can just try to put these two into our differential equation, into our system of differential equations. No big deal to, uh, to differentiate a couple of times this thing, and you will see that this is a solution, regardless of alpha, beta, phi, and psi. So that's very important. And uh, again, whether it's complete solution or not is beyond of this course. It actually belongs to an advanced course of differential equations. Uh, not physics. Um, now, um, all things which I was just talking about are, I think, very nicely presented in notes for this lecture on unisor.com, and I encourage you to basically take a look at this. Well, it's a little longer lecture than usual. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>